This episode is powered by Anivia Pickleball. Based in the heart of Vancouver, BC, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, they have the paddle for you. I myself am currently using their Voltex Gen 3 Pro, which comes in both mid and lightweight. A big thank you for the team at Anivia for taking a chance on me in this podcast. And for listeners of the podcast, if you enter Gorman 15 at checkout, you get 15% off. Check out Anivia.com now. That's A-G-O-R-M-A-N 15 at checkout. On with the show. All right, everyone, we're back nice and quick. We just had the uh, the draft happen. How you doing, Victor? Good. How are you, Andrew? Doing good. A little disappointed that Irene didn't get picked, but other than that, I am okay. Um, so before we do a full recap of the draft, we are going to uh, quickly go over uh, what happened just a, a day before um, the announcement that Leah Bradwall was injured, um, and it's going to be long term. So what they s- announced was that in the in the spirit of fairness that uh, the um, smash, we're going to take her back and give back a pick to the, uh, to the rush. So the way this affected how the, uh, the smash picked is that they already had four players. So they were basically picking fifth and sixth round. So they didn't have, they didn't, they lost basically their fourth round pick. And then the uh, rush got two picks in the fourth round, getting that pick back. And then they only had two people to start. So, um, and then, so what we'll do, Victor, is we'll go over um, if people uh, hadn't realized that each team was picking six players this year, three guys and three girls, unlike last year where it was just four and four. Mm-hmm. I got a feeling part of the reason was because of all the issues with finding alternates last year when players were either injured or couldn't make events. Okay. Um, also, the way that uh, it looks like the, um, the events are going to be set up is that there's going to be a, a few, a lot more games being played. There's going to be like nine games each weekend. So you have that sub there. If someone's, you know, starting to tire out and not feeling it by the end of it. Yeah. I think last year they, they have that problem. I think match uh, Matthew Kawamoto was uh, injured or something like that. And he has to play, play through it during the, uh, the Edmonton stop because there is no alternate uh, or an, an and anyone that that can fit in into the team so i think having six is a good good idea just in case in case some someone's hurt or just tired or maybe it's like we call a dead like sometimes we call that dead rubber right that you're already in uh, uh ahead or you're maybe the other side maybe not 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 in a winning position it's like what what's the point to in, injure your uh your best player right exactly yeah so uh with that um what we quickly do is we'll go over the players that the teams kept and then the way we're going to go over the draft everyone is that we are just going to announce who actually got picked um and we're going to list that from one to i think it's what 33 yeah one to 33 so there's 33 spots left so the rollers and the lions didn't keep anyone so they had all six of their picks the rush because of that leah bradwell trade just had two people kept brett forsyth and jordan vigna the mm-hmm. Brewers had just kept Mark Clemenson. The Pronghorns had Brad Chapman and Kim Brent. The Wolverines had Joel Pelche and Haddle Thull. The Smash, yep. because of the Leah Bradwell thing, had Kim Layton, Christina, Christina Chin, Dalbir Bandall, and then, of course, Leah Bradwell took up that fourth spot. So then they only got two picks. And then Toronto United had kept their core four from last year, Hannah Blatt, Matt Guamoto, Mark Gottfried, and Carolina Hack. So same thing. They were just picking their fi- the final two picks of the draft. Gotcha. And then starting off, so the Lions and Rollers, because people were keeping um, players, basically what that happened is if any of you have ever played fantasy, football, basketball, hockey, anything like that, that basically counts, keeping a player counts as your first round pick. So the way the first two rounds went is basically Lions and Rollers just rotated back and forth with first, second, third, and fourth picks. Hmm. So right off the hop, first pick for the Lions, and this was no surprise to anybody, um, was Ernesto. 
He's one of the he's one of the top ranked players in Canada. He was the first player signed in the CPA. Um, he's from Montreal, so and this was a great uh, kind of pillar to set for this team. Um, he runs a a pickleball uh, gym there in Montreal. So and you'll see from the picks that they made after this is that they're really kind of focusing centering around that. Um, and we kind of discussed this last podcast that a lot of the teams were kind of looking to kind of pick more where everyone was kind of roughly in the same area code to make it easier for practices and drilling and stuff. But mm -hmm. no surprise with Ernesto getting picked first. Um, my guess would have been either him or basically the person that the Lions picked second if we were going to go who's getting picked first for men's just based off yeah. uh, just based off of that. Yeah, but just based off uh, Ernesto's uh, performance in the Nationals and uh, uh, anything anything else it makes sense you we want to have him as a uh, first pick anyway and on top of that he well you, he he's running what they call the code uh, the code the Lies, uh, tennis club that's what 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 is called it's a pretty big uh indoor facility so they can play year round over over there no problem so that that kind of makes sense to have him uh, as as the pillar of the other of the team yeah absolutely and then in the set for the second pick, uh, Jessica Kwanamoto got picked by the Rollers. Um, so she's back on the Rollers this year again. Um, no surprise, she was the top-ranked female going into this. Uh, she played last year, didn't re-sign, um, but got picked by the Rollers again. Um, uh, just She was just a force uh, uh, to reckon with on the court last year when you watched the CMPL. And then if you look at her uh, qualifier, she went 17-3. and three. So... Mm -hmm. No surprise there. She was probably, from for my money, probably the top ranked female that hadn't been drafted yet uh, going into this. And so that once again, another great pillar to kind of set down, uh, having a very very strong female to start off with for the rollers. Yeah, it's just interesting why why the roller didn't keep her and then just just redraft her. <laughs> like, what? Why? Why did why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure with that. Um, who knows? Maybe uh, maybe they hadn't. Uh, communicated proper intentions with uh or maybe at the time when they were re when everyone was resigning players they weren't sure what direction they were going in so yeah that's so, interesting yeah. and uh yeah i saw uh, the, uh, jessica Blake uh, in the edmonton stop i'm actually calling her like the canadian version of uh, vivian david the way that she she, she can uh, get low all all time and resetting all ball uh with at all all, all that all position of the court so uh, uh, she's uh, definitely a good great asset for for the team absolutely yeah. and then also another player who signed to the cpa pro tour as well so no mm -hmm. surprise there with that pick and then look back to the lions for the third pick Luis charles amat once again this was no surprise for this pick um he had the best record out of anybody um in all of the qualifiers combined he went 18 mm -hmm. and 2. um um, he's also signed to the CPA Pro Tour. Um, he was one of those players, kind of like Ernesto last year, where they didn't really think that the CMPL was going to be um, maybe something that was going to be worthwhile to get into. And then as soon as the CMPL happened, they were like, oh, we got to get into this. And then that's why you saw them going all out in this. Um, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, from what I've heard, talking to, other, talking to pro players and stuff like that, he's a force to reckon with on the court. And he showed it in both the men's side and the women's, uh, and, sorry, men's side and the mixed side in the uh, qualifiers. Like I said, two losses on the entire th on the entire uh, weekend. So, mm -hmm. and you, we we and I I did a little bit digging as I I went to check in in his uh, turn. Uh, you can call me I'm a, I'm a stalker, but anyway, uh, I, I I am sometimes uh, for for tournaments in order to know my opponent. <laughs> So he he did uh, what he, he did play quite consistently in an uh, open category in, in any tournaments. Last year's uh, he has I think one from all the uh, unpicked um, uh, from all, all the drafting players. He he has the best uh, I would say med medal rate. He basically almost medal at eight, every tournament. So he has eight gold, six silver, and two bronze. So which is a uh, pretty pretty significant in in the open category. Absolutely, yeah. And with that pick, like you almost right off the bat have to give the Lions a big foot up on anybody when it comes just to the men's pairing. Oh yeah. Of course, of course, we'll get to that once we finish off going through the draft. But that's already a huge factor with Ernesto and uh, Luis Charles being their their starting men's pair. Mm -hmm. All right, then we go back to the Rollers for the fourth pick. 
They went with Ryan Torrenson. Um, from the from what I could see from the photos for the uh, for the qualifiers, he went eight and two. Now that was the mixed record only. They didn't have a combined sheet um, okay. for the qualifier he was in. But um, uh, he, I know he plays mostly in the U.S. He was one of those Canadians who's been living in the U.S. and he's come up to uh, uh, participate in this. But looking at uh, if you aside from being eight and two, if you look at his court share, which is that if you were, uh, I'll put the graphic up once uh, once we post the video version of the podcast. Um, but uh, if anyone, any of you follow me on Instagram, you saw how I posted Irene's rating uh, during the qualifiers. The very first number there, uh, it's like a, her number, for example, Irene was like a 1.9 court share. That meant she spent most of her time either on championship court or sorry, or King's court or whatever you want to call it, or court two for the average of the 1.9. Uh, Ryan's uh, same thing. He, I think his average was like a 1.9 or like maybe a 2.0. So he was either on court one or court two the entire time during the qualifier. Good. The fact that he still went eight and two in the mix uh, shows how adept he is at playing at that high level. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, that shows quite a bit. And also, uh, since he's playing mostly US, I stock him in Duper, then, mm-hmm. therefore. So on, du- on Duper, he has uh, 5.59 uh, on there. And uh, usually, I, uh, so just for, for information, uh, the player I give the duper numbers are usually the player have played more than 30, 30, 30 games because when there's less than 30 games, I will say even usually duper will say usually when you play less than 20 games is not significant. But from my experience, you actually need more than 30 games to be actually have a, some sort of significance to um to, uh, to compare com- compare other player with so uh this uh, Ryan did have a 5.59 so which which means he he's pretty uh, pretty strong player absolutely yeah and then we move on to the fifth pick and this was the Brewers first pick and this would have been in the second round and they went with uh Amanda Rosati um if you listen to the last podcast she was one of the females that I had mentioned of uh, kind of the new yep. names on the block uh, who um, I thought was going to get picked. Same thing. She plays mostly in the U.S. I want to say she's from like New Jersey. She's living in like New Jersey or something like that or yeah, around that. You're area. right. Yeah, you're right. And um, but same thing went 14 and seven in the qualifier. So that's a uh, um, and that's combined uh, women's and mixed. Um, so very, very, uh, very, very uh, good showing there. Um, I think that was that had her in like the top the top five or something like that in that particular qualifier that she was in. So that's a really good pick to go along with um, Mark Clemenson. Uh, so you have a very strong uh, male and a very strong female off the hat. So there's your, there's your mix pairing. Uh, at least what we would assume would be the starting mix pair uh, for the brewers. And um, yeah, so that looks really good. And she's got a fairly high dupe rate too, doesn't she uh, Victor? Yeah, she has a five point zero eight. Yeah, and also, also don't don't forget, she did play several APP and PPA uh, Golden Qualifier I- I- events. So they basically, she has ton tons of uh, experience from the from the states. Um, and just uh, an, another thing, just to uh, quantify it, men's duper usually tends to be higher than a woman woman's duper. So. Even though, like uh, we just said, Ryan have five point five nine, and then uh, Amanda now has a five point zero eight, you may say, "Well, there's a point five of, uh, of a, a duper point difference." But from from a woman's perspective, I would say when, uh, that point five is actually pretty close to uh, to to each other. Just for example, uh, Ben Johns had has a seven point two duper, and then you look at Anderley Waters, which is the number one female, also has six uh, six point uh, six point eight. So it has pretty much that 0.5 uh, duper difference, but they have pretty much the same level level play. Exactly, yeah. All right, then we move on to um, the Lions' next pick, which was Anne-Sophie Corteau. Uh, went 12-5 and five in the qualifiers. Um, I think she's been situated mostly in Quebec. Um, yes, she is. Yeah, and so there's not a lot of info on her, but uh, just going same thing. She went 12 and five, uh, was high up there in the rankings, um, and that was playing in a qualifier that had like you know Jessica Quanamoto, had Luis Charles Amat, had Ernesto in it, right? So you you were already you she was playing at some of the top top levels, and the fact that she still went 12 and five um, is very very impressive. So that's um, and then sticking with Mont- uh, Montreal's thing, all those are uh, people living in living in Quebec. So mm-hmm. all going to be very, very close, 
I'll be able to train together very easily. So M- Montreal was definitely going with the uh, theme of keeping everyone uh, within the same area code type of deal. Yeah, and did, she did play in some tournament this year with uh, M- MLE, and they have a pretty decent result uh, from uh, all of it. So I, w- I will say she, uh, with uh, her playing also with a- Emma, definitely um, a- Emma's not going to play with a- a- anyone that that's not at her c- caliber too, right? So there, therefore means yeah. that she has definitely good potential. Exactly, yeah. And then the seventh pick, the Rollers went with Casey Rogers. So Casey doesn't need much of an introduction. Yeah, uh, played, for the, uh, played for the Rush last year. Um, was a force on the court. She's currently in Australia, playing in the MLP in Australia for the Vipers. Um, they did have her on the pre-show as well, interviewing her. I don't know what time it was in Australia when she was doing that. I kind of felt bad for her. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's uh, her and Jessica as a women's tandem is going to be fun to watch. Um, mm-hmm. Casey's all about the speed ups and the hand battles. Jessica likes those too, but then Jessica also has the amazing defense to go along with that. So that's that's a very high quality women's pairing uh, right off the hop there for the rollers. So, mm-hmm. and then moving on to the Brewers, this one was seemed kind of out of left field. Yeah, it's a little. Um, that was Victoria, a little weird. Victoria De Muzo. So. Uh, looking at the qualifiers, she was in. They only had the women's one up. She went four and five. Um, so not a great record there. Um, uh, pair, and then when they said on the broadcast, she had only started to play pickleball recently. Um, I don't know what level she's been playing at, but uh, it's interesting that this early of a pick was used on this much of an unknown who didn't have that great of qualifier showing. Yeah, so that was like she went four and five in women's, and then um, that was the same one Jessica Kwanamoto was in, and then she wasn't even listed in, or wasn't in those top twenty for the mixed. Mm. So wow. um, who knows? Maybe the Brewers uh, have seen her playing more often. Maybe she had an off weekend. Um, but this is one of those kind of off the board kind of picks that uh, you and me had been talking about before we started uh, recording. So um, interested to see how she does. Um, it's going to be a, if she hasn't been playing high, high level, this is going to be a massive jump going from whatever she's been playing at to pro level. So, yeah. is she, is she a tennis player too? I'm, I'm not, I think I'm not she a is a tennis or a squash player. And she might have played like Div one or something like that. But, and there's actually a lot of people on this list that have seem to have kind of that background, which I, it seems like a few of these general managers were jumping on that bandwagon. But, mm. As we've seen from, if you watch the PPA, uh, that can go either way. If you take Jack Saw, very, 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 very successful with the transfer over. He worked at it really, really hard. But then you look at, unfortunately, our Canadian girl with that, and uh, she did not do it as well. So well, I'll say not only hard, she, so. not only she. There's a few other tennis players did not uh, show up. Uh, uh, after this transition to pick, uh, pickleball, you talk about Sam Curry. Where is he? I don't see him. I don't see him in, in any any uh, main draw. And then another one, uh, Donald Young. Where is he? I don't see him. Yeah, right. I so don't see him neither. Like like pick like coming from tennis or coming from squash, you do have that natural like racket sport abilities, but you still have to work at it. And it's and jumping from one. Even if you were, say, D1, jumping into pro pickleball right off the hop, it's a massive transition. I don't. I think mm-hmm. when people are doing this, um, and even general managers picking players like this, now, like I said, she might come in and blow us out of the water. I don't know. I haven't gotten to see her play. Um, but this is one of those picks where it's like, okay, come in and do it, but don't just assume because you play D1 tennis or D1 squash you're going to come in and roll everybody. Yeah, definitely. Right? So, so it's an also, interesting it's an interesting pick. I'm interested to see how it goes. Like I said, very very of an unknown player. Um, yeah. So I think we'll the, how- uh, one of the highlight from her, she won go on the three point five w- w- uh, level uh, women's double during the uh, pickleball Ontario Championship Series. Uh, that's the only thing I was able to find 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 out from her. Um, yeah, and th- uh, three point five to pro is a massive jump. Oh yeah, it's a big jump. Unfortunately, take it from take it from someone who's only just moved up to like the four oh four five ish rating. Victor as well. When <laughs> we play the pros, 
we don't look oh. we don't look nearly that good so no wait i i got smashed by jorge every day so yeah right so, exactly when i played in the qualifiers i i was getting picked on a bunch by like these higher level players so there's a massive jump so i'm interested to see how she handles it um best of luck yeah, to it's, tough. That. Yeah, it's so, tough to for, for tough. us to, to judge because we we yeah. never saw saw her play and we don't have any result to back yeah. up uh and it. yeah this is me just looking at the qualifiers in a vacuum and a four and five record on the women's side um mm -hmm. that for me that's not good like I, if if your total record was say ten and ten, and most of those losses were in mix, that's one thing. That also falls onto your male partner as well, especially yeah. at the pro level where the males tend to take over the game a little bit more. Yeah. If you're not finishing with a high positive record on the women's side, you're going to be a detriment to your team. Mm -hmm. Right. People so will probably let, pick on you a little bit more. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So we'll we'll see we'll see. Like um, I won't pass any i'm i'm skeptical but i'm not going to pass any hard judgment on her until we see the first uh the first event so yeah definitely so and so then the ninth pick the pronghorns got emily so she played for the rollers last year very very strong player um she's played in national she's played in open categories um this is a great pick uh to go uh with uh kim brent as a uh, female partner Mm -hmm. um, you kind of have that. You have like the super experience of Kim Brent, and then yep. you have the youthful, energetic, and talent of Emily as well. So that's I'm interested to see how they play together. And Kim Brent now is actually, even though it says she's from Vancouver, she's actually apparently living in Ottawa right now. So oh, that's okay. not as big of a drive as I as what I originally thought when the when the pick first came up. Mm -hmm. So Ottawa is actually very very close to. Um, very close to Quebec and very uh, and, and not that far of a drive from like Montreal or wherever uh, Emma's mm -hmm. from. So they'll be able to actually um, uh, meet up and uh, train together a bunch. Yeah, and Emily uh, from from that drafting field is the uh, strongest or the most med medalist uh, woman in, uh, from from by far. She won eleven gold, six silver, and one bronze last year, and she plays up mostly in op open category. So which really shows her. Uh, I just being a little bit surprised she'd be picked at ninth uh, maybe I, I i would thought she might be uh, picked a little bit higher but anyway yeah and well and especially like i thought she might have gotten picked up by like the lions because i know she's played tournaments with ernesto yeah exactly right so and like it's not like the lions didn't have multiple opportunities to grab her right like like i said like between her jessica and casey i thought those would be the first three women to get picked mm -hmm. out of who's available but like jessica got picked right away but even casey dropped to seventh yeah, so interesting so and, it, and, yeah, and emily's interesting. from montreal too right so exactly right. yeah so it's not like she was far away so interesting to see maybe she had i don't know maybe with the owner last year oh no wait no she was on the rollers last year never mind no so, she was on the rollers just not yeah even so yeah so yeah so what, it wouldn't have been anything with the ownership group so yeah, so that's so it's interesting that she dropped that far down. That's a good pickup by the Pronghorns. So interested to see how that works. Mm -hmm. Then moving on to the tenth pick, so the Wolverines picked picked Sabrina Lamb. Uh, Sabrina played in the Western Qualifiers. She had the next best record for women's next to Irene. Mm -hmm. um, so Sabrina played very very well. I think her average court was like a same thing, like a one point eight, a one point nine, something like that. So she was always on championship or king's court or court two the entire time nice uh very very strong player um and i thought she did really well like i had her listed as one of the uh women i thought would get drafted from the west uh, or i thought had the best one of the best chances of getting drafted from the western qualifiers so it's still going to be a big jump for mm -hmm. her but she did handle herself very very well uh when i watched her play in the uh mixed against like some of those um higher ranked men men like Matt Sadola, um, Eugene Mack, and um, all those guys. So she held herself very, very well there. So I'm interested to see how well she does. And I'm curious to see who she's going to play with on the Wolverines, whether it's going to be Hado or Joel. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's good that she she actually did well on on the um, uh, on the qualifier because she I think in her tournament record, she basically mostly play on uh, three five women's and and mix uh, last year even either though he she she won two gold one silver and three bonds which is uh, pretty pretty good and she has a 
4.192 per rating too so uh, which, which is uh, a um, a good uh, good rating for for this, uh, but I will say we'll see how how big of a jump for her is going to be on uh, in into the team. Yeah, and when your strongest opponent at that qualifier was Irene, that's still yeah. like. And as much as I love my wife and I thought she did amazing, <laughs> that's still not that's still a big drop down from when you have to play say someone like Christina Chin or Kim Lee. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. So, but uh, I'm cheering for Sabrina. Um, I thought she did an amazing job at the uh, at the qualifier. So, and like I said, if Irene wasn't getting in, she would have been my next pick for the women. So, mm -hmm. on West. So, uh, uh, shout out to her. So, uh, next we have the eleventh pick, and this was the Lions again, sticking with the uh, the Quebec theme. Uh, Jay Cristiano Laporte. Uh, she went 12 and nine at the qualifier, so another pretty good showing. And same thing, her court share was like in like the twos, like the two in the one. So she was constantly playing on those higher level courts. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, going by going by that, um, once again, Montreal sticking with keeping everyone close so that they can all train together. I'm interested to see how she's going to do. Yeah, she she did play a couple of open category, uh, open in four point category last year. One gold, three silver, and three bonds, which is, so which is pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, and she's also from Mon uh, yeah, uh, is she from Montreal or Saint Jean sur Richelieu? I think she's from Saint Jean sur Richelieu, uh, which is uh, uh, why 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 I'm saying that is uh, the there's a military base in Saint Jean sur Richelieu, which is the recruit school uh, from the Canadian Fourth Army. So that's why that's why I know that. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, not per uh, th that information is not really per pertinent for for us. <laughs> that's okay. You're just na you're just name dropping places. That's good. Exactly. <laughs> And then for the 12th pick, we have uh, for the Rollers, Matt Sedola. So Matt played for the Pronghorns last year with Brad Chapman. Um, mm -hmm. He's got that amazing two-handed backhand. So even though he's a lefty, uh, he doesn't really have – like they, they made the joke last year that he doesn't really have a backhand. Yeah. Two-handed okay. backhand is almost just as strong as anyone's forehand slam. Um, he's a great singles player as well. So if you, get, if you go into a uh, Dream Breaker match um, – He's very, very capable at that. So um, it would be him and Ryan are kind of are the two men uh, for the mm -hmm. rollers. And then I'm interested to see if he plays with Jessica or Casey. I'm almost thinking that he might play with Casey because those two skills, they'll be basically coming at you like a bat out of hell. Yeah, uh, I agree. To you together as a mixed pair. Yeah, last year I did. Uh, I did. A, I ref his match with. Uh, I think he was playing with uh, Brad Chapman, if I'm not mistaken. That last yeah, the Western qualifiers. Together, and I think I, they, got, I, they got silver against Joel and Hado, didn't they? Yeah, uh, something like that. And I, I, uh, I was so confused when, when, well, when I, I, when I have him, I was like, you see lefty or or righty? He's like you, you using two hand, uh, two handed on both sides. So I was like. What's going on? Yeah, so it, it, it was interesting, and but but he he was hitting the the bar free really hard. So yeah, that, that was a very good match to watch. No, yeah, exactly. And then to the thirteenth pick, we have the rush. Um, this was another kind of off the board pick. They picked Joe Williamson. He was in the Western qualifier. I got to meet Joe. Um, he's a great guy, and he's a pretty and he's a pretty good player. He's like definitely better than me, but um. I couldn't even find his record because he wasn't in the top twenty. I, I didn't find his record either. Uh, yeah, like, no, but like because I was tr I was trying to find him because I had, of course, the snapshots from the Western qualifier, and um, and he and he like he wasn't in that top twenty category that the screen shows. Mm. So yeah. I I know I played against him at least two or three times, and I was stuck on for the men's. I was stuck on like court four, court three the entire time. And I played I played with him and against him at least more than once. And then I know for mixed, I think for mixed he did a lot better. Like I think he was on like court two, court three. But still, uh, when you look at for him to go this early, yeah, that's a little um, bit surprising. ahead of like people like Nathan Choi, ahead of people like even people at the Western qualifiers who finished ahead of him, like Eugene Mack or uh, Sunny Butar or. Um, uh, Bandan, I always forget his first name, but uh, Instagram handles ball, uh, ball and cuts. Um, they all finished way ahead of him in like um, record and win percentage and on championship court. So um, 
I know when I talked to him, like I said, he's a very friendly guy. He's very good on the court. He said he had kind of taken a hiatus from pickleball for a year or so. Mm. So I don't know maybe if uh, Brett Forsyth knows something that we all don't. Mm -hmm. Um, But to have this as your first guy pick, um, and even your first pick of the ra- of the uh, of the draft, it's it's interesting. Like I could see him maybe as like your sixth pick, or like your third guy pick. But I'm, mm-hmm. but because uh, at that point, when when you're when you're picking your kind of alternate male and female, then that's where I was expecting more kind of off the board picks to happen, because yep. then it's like okay, it's someone who's going to be close, someone who you can train with you, and then you trust them enough to jump in in a pinch, say if someone goes down or if someone can't play type of thing, mm-hmm. right? But I wasn't expecting this much of an off the board pick at, at the thirteenth pick. Yeah, that was a, that so, was an interesting pick. Yeah, I'm trying to gather some data from from him on Duper on on pickleball rackets. Nothing really shows shows up on him either. Yeah. So it's a really tough call. Why uh, why uh, does he get picked? Because a lot of other 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 uh, players had either played tremendous uh, uh, amount uh, of tournaments, have uh, some at least some some decent results at, at least, and then that, that kind of justified the, the, the picks. But him, uh, I'm not trying, I'm trying, don't want to be a prejudice on, on him, but I was like, mm, I don't know anything. Yeah, no, exactly, right? So, like, and like I said, I got to see him play. He's a very good player. He's very well rounded. He's got power. He's got defense. He can do resets and stuff like that. But, like, the fact that he played multiple times against me on the men's side tells me that he wasn't winning that much. Yeah, unfortunately. like I said, I was I was clearly like if not the the losingest person on the guy's side, I was like in the bottom two. And I and I knew going into that it was prob- that was probably going to be the fact because like I'm four zero barely four five at this point, and these people are all like four five five zeros and up, right? Like I was I was going there for the experience, so mm-hmm. but. Um, but no, yeah, like he's a great guy, um, very positive on the court and stuff like that. So, but yeah, it's just interesting to see him go this high in the draft. Yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll, never see know. we'll see. Like, like I said, he could he could come in and him and Brett could just surprise everybody and win. Like, um, that's why you play the games. It's not a. It's not just on paper, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have all, all, always some surprises. Like same for a lot. Uh, if you look at the U.S. side, the MLP, who thought that Rachel Robacher was that that strong? No one knew that. No, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So then we move on to the Brewers at the 14th pick. Uh, Mikel uh, Gamons. He went 11 and 8 at the qualifier. I'm not very familiar with him. Um, and this is kind of off of the. Uh, this is going off of like getting someone from like around the Toronto area because I'm pretty sure he's like around the Montreal area or something, isn't he? Something something like that, I think. He's yeah. he's from Ontario, if not mistaken. Oh, he's from Ontario? Okay. He I is, he's from see he's from Ontario, pretty sure. Okay, so then he's gonna be double check. Where, he's gonna be close to where the brewers are training. Um but it's, yeah it's it's interesting that this is the um this is the this is gonna be the second guy. So he's gonna be the one playing with Mark Clemenson. So I mean I don't know maybe he trains with Mark and Mark knows him really well and he's comfortable I have a feeling he he he. I think he played a couple of tournaments in Collingwood, if not not mistaken. Yeah, uh, I'm still it's still loading, but uh, um, I'm get, giving you the information right now. But uh, no, yeah. So I, I'm interested to see. Like he 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 went eleven and eight for um. That's mm-hmm. both mixed and men's. So that's that's not that's not too bad of a result. And he was playing he was playing in a in a qualifier that had some of the big big names in it. So that's yeah. That's, he, he's that's, from uh, Rock Lang, on Ontario. So we mean, which means he's from the Ottawa uh, regions. Ottawa. Okay. Yeah. So, Otto, Ottawa's not too far of it. Like I'm saying, not too far of a drive. Anyone from <laughs> Ontario who says it's a long drive, I drive five and a half hours to get to a tournament. That's how far away I am from Edmonton. So I'm sorry, your one and a half, two hour drive is not a long drive to me. So, so it's, uh, I'm for, from for, Rock for me, Lang. for me, that's barely a day trip. <laughs> Rockland to Collin was about probably five to six hours. I would say. I would say around five to six hours. So, oh yeah, yeah I'm, not too I'm, bad. Ta- I'm talking about if he's going and going to go train with like Mark and stuff. Like they can schedule it, and you can make a day out of that. Though, if not, yeah, not, yeah, 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 definitely. So, so that yeah, so that's that's a that's an interesting pick. And then at 15 for the Pronghorns, they went with Jeff Elwood. So he played for the Brewers last year, and he was actually in the very first uh, split they had. He was kind of the standout player. Um, very, very good at singles. He's got a lot of power. Um, 
I'm interested to see how he plays with Brad. Um, because realistically, if it was up to me, Brad Chapman's one of the best players in Canada, and realistically, he should be playing the left. But Brad is so good at defense and so good at resets, yeah. and Jeff is very, very powerful. I got a feeling they might stick Jeff on the left and Brad on the right. Yeah, that could be. And I'm not always a fan of that. Like, I've seen Brad do that with a couple of different partners. Like, I know when he played with Charles Newfeld, he played the right and Charles played the left. And I I don't know. I, like, most most times, like, with, with how high of a skill player Brad Chapman is, I'd like to see him play the left. Mm-hmm. Right, but but Brad, it's not not like the typical offensive player that you want to. Uh, no, but he, so. but he, but if you, but if he, he's one of those. I'm not saying he's not strong, but it's just no, like, no, no. Yeah, like, like he's he, like he's definitely. If when you think of Brad Chapman, like I always, I always say he's like the king of resets because mm-hmm. his defense is so good. But also, if you make a mistake, he finishes it. Yeah, like, almost every it. single time, right? So it's one of it's one of those things where it's. It'll be interesting to see what they what they come up with for that uh, for that men's pairing. And then I got a feeling I would probably would stick him. Well, uh, probably it's going to be with Emily just because Brad and Kim played together last year and they were pretty successful as that mixed mm-hmm. pair. So, agree. And then we move down to the rush again. Uh, Sophia uh, Racine, I think, is how you say that yep. name. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she went eleven and ten, which is not bad. Um, it's kind of interesting. The rush are kind of all over the place with who they're picking because she played in like one of the qualifiers out east. So, like right now, the rush have Brent and um, Joe in Western Canada, um, and then now and then and, Sophia. Um, and, Jor- and then I guess she. Oh, 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 sorry, but she is also isn't she like Jordan's normal training partner? Yeah, yeah, I think so true. because she she did she did play a couple of tur- tournaments together at that GTA Open, and then they they won bronze. So I, I have a feeling okay. they are training together. I got a feeling that was kind of the more reason she was picked um, mm. for that is because once she already plays with Jordan, so then there's your kind of women's pairing who are already familiar with with each other. Yeah, at least they'll be able to train together on a regular basis. So, mm-hmm. so that um so that's interesting with that one. Um, then the 17th pick, the Wolverines picked uh, Natalie Aria. Um, she went nine and nine at the uh, qualifiers, and she's from the East. So I don't know. I don't know who she's going to be training with because um, yes. Joel Hado are both in West. Alberta, and then uh, Sabrina is in um, BC. So I'm interested to see. Um, I know she's coming from a tennis background. And only just started to play recently. I wanted to say when they announced that she'd only started playing in like January or something like that. Yeah, or like, I, I, or like she last only, year. Yeah, she played a couple tournaments, uh, four point oh, and open tournaments, but like, uh, like very few tour- tournaments record at this point. So difficult, difficult, difficult to get uh, to say uh, how her performance is right now. Yeah, and nine and nine. Um, I know. Oh, actually, one second, I'm gonna pull. Pull it up here because I did take. I think I got nine and nine from adding the two together because she played in the same one as uh, Quanamoto here. Um, so for women's, she went five and five, and then four and four in mix. So hmm. that's not bad, but like I'm one saying, what was her court share? Two point five. So she was playing on like two and three. Mm-hmm. Court the entire time at the qualifier, so not bad. Um, it's an interesting pick. Um, there was definitely women who performed higher. Yeah. Um. So, uh, we'll see. And the fact that she's completely on the East Coast and the rest of the team is on the West, um, is going to be interesting for training purposes. Mm-hmm. But uh, maybe, we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. I guess it's going to be her and uh, Sabrina maybe, starting pair. Uh, you, or maybe she she'll be alternate. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, but if you're gonna, why why would you pick her so early if that's going to be your alternate? You know, no idea. Like, like <laughs> the, the the pick has been kind of a bit messed up this time. Yeah, right. right. So that, that that's what that's what because that was your, that was their second pick because they picked Sabrina first and then they picked then they picked mm-hmm. um, Natalie. So, um, so yeah, it's 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 interesting. So like so 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 far with the draft, they would be her and um, Sabrina two kind of inexperienced at the pro level women. So it's like, you're kind of, I'm not going to say punting your women's pair, 
but because I know you have Joel and Hado as your men's pair, but mm-hmm. um, you have two very inexperienced women at at your um, at your women's pair uh, at this at this point now in the draft. So but we'll we'll see how it goes, I guess. Uh, then for the 18th pick, the Lions went with uh, Antonia Toscova. Um, she went 10 and 10 at the qualifier, so another kind of 50% uh, player. Um, and I apparently she's like from Bulgaria, I think is what it said, or uh, Belgium or something like that um, is what they said on the um, on the um, on the stream. Um, her court share was 3.8, so that means she was playing on like court three, court four, court five hmm. at the qualifiers. So. I don't know. It's uh, one of those ones where, yeah, it's a difficult one too. Uh, it's she's a difficult ne- one she now. She like, but I think she's living. She's she's living in like Montreal or close to Ernesto and them. So she's going to be able to train a bunch with them and get reps in. So it's going to be interesting to see. Um, at this point, she's the third woman. So um, yeah, she could be the out al- al- alternate. Oh so, yeah, so I got a feeling she'll be the alternate, especially when you have. Um, the other two, uh, the other two and ladies, Sophie, that they picked, and, uh, Anna Sophie and uh, Jade Cassandra. So yeah, exactly. So, yeah, she's basically going to be their third, third female. So at least she'll get lots of reps in, and then uh, if she can step in and take over, then uh, if someone goes down, then that'll be interesting to see as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, she she didn't play any tournaments yet, so uh, sanctioned tournament, I would say, or uh, so we'll see. It's going to be a surprise. Yeah. And then uh, 19th pick, the Rollers went with uh, Tara Di Giuseppe. Um, mm-hmm. I only saw her women's record, which was eight and two, um, which was which was really good because I was in the same division as um, like Jessica Quanamoto. Yep. So um, now I don't know what uh, what it was for mixed uh, if she got stuck down in the bomb because I don't think she was in. I'm back looking at the. Uh, but she has the decent result. She she got uh, on the Collingwood uh, Classic. She won mix and uh, women's doubles uh, as uh, they got sil- uh, silver. So on a two uh, four point zero and a four point five level. So yeah. which is uh, pretty, I will say, pretty significant. So yeah. therefore, as a uh, as a, I will say that's a strong alternate uh, pick. No, yeah, exactly. Like she's like she should be able to pop in with anyone and uh, and at least hold the forts. Mm-hmm. Um, for the uh, rollers, especially because you're you're going to be behind Casey and Jessica, so um, yeah. So if if one of them goes down, at least you can kind of pop in and kind of hold the fort for them. Yeah, definitely. And then at the twentieth pick for the Smash's first pick, and I can't believe he fell this far down the draft again. Yeah, I, he, I, I, did, did nobody learn anything from last year? Uh, Nathan Short. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, um. Nathan was probably one of the most standout players last year uh, playing for the Rush. Um, he was definitely their strongest male player. Um, and then the whole thing with the trade to the Brewers and the Brewers ended up keeping him because of drafts. Um, guess what, Brewers? He was still available. Um, and then you still made three picks before before that. So I don't... Someone, I, don't get, I don't get why Nathan fell this low. Um, I have a feeling someone forgot about him, and then Kim and Christina was like, "Well, we're, we're picking him now." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Like, like if you look, so if with Nathan being picked up, so this is the starting four for the Smash: Christina Chin, Kim Layton, um, Dal Dalbeer, and Nathan. You got two of the tallest players in the entire league for the men. <laughs> Ouch! And Nathan's probably got the hardest Smash out of anyone. Um, I'm interested to see what they're going to do for mixed pairs. I'd almost want to oh. stick Nathan and Christina together because that's just going to be a high octane. Mm-hmm. And then you got Kim Layton, who's like solid as a rock. And then if you stick to Albier with her, that's going to that's going to be a formidable team. Mm-hmm. But no, I, yeah, I can't believe I cannot believe that Nathan fell that low. Yeah, like, I was like who? Like why? Why? Anyway, yeah, that's that was that's, so that's confusing. Not, not our desi- our decision, definitely. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, that was it. Was so weird that he fell that low, but so uh, well, I, I think like, what, someone whatever, must have forgot about him for sure. But I guess I, must just I, forget I, it. I, I guess so. Um, and then twenty first pick, the Brewers pick uh, Kyle uh, Hermedes. Um, he was seven and three in mixed. Um, I have seen, um, I follow him and he follows me on uh, Instagram. I've seen lots of highlights of him playing. He's a very, very solid player. 
and um as the uh i'm interested to see if he uh how him and mikhail fight for that second guy spot mm. right because um because he's a pretty good player i've uh, seen lots of highlights of him and i know he's played uh with in tournaments with some of the higher level female players as well so um i think he's from that one health club in ontario Okay. So he plays. Uh, he he he's normally playing with like um, uh, Carolina Hack, Mark Godfried, uh, like a lot of those players. He's scrimmaging with all the time. So um, I got a feeling he's gonna he he's gonna uh, do a decent showing. And he's like the third male for the Brewers. So it's gonna be interesting how that works out. Yeah, he, he has a pretty good record. He he did uh, had he's a silver medalist in uh on the ontario per provincial so so which uh, which uh says a lot if he, uh in the 4.5 level if i'm not mistaken so which shows shows a lot in in order to make make, make it that far because ontario has uh quite a bit of good good players o over there and be able to make it all the way to sil uh, to uh, to silver that that, sh that shows uh, a lot of things yeah all right, and then the 22nd pick with the Pronghorns uh, went with uh, Michael McCaffrey. I got to see him play at the Western Qualifiers. He went 11 and 9. Um, he is going to be the third guy, so I can him at him as the third male. I can see that that makes sense. But um, like he wasn't he wasn't the top like three the three or four guys um, at the qual at the qualifier. And, like I played against him in mixed. Um, Two or three times actually when we were playing the mix part of it mm -hmm. um so but like he's a good solid player um good shots good control so um but yeah a, as an as an alternate male um that's that's a decent pick mm -hmm. yeah uh, definitely he he's pretty actually what what we he did is the goal he he won goal in in single and uh, bronze in uh, men's double in uh, B the BC provincial, so that's a uh, pretty that that's pretty good in a uh, four point five level. And he does also play quite uh, quite a bit in other uh, U.S. tournaments, so uh, in the open category. So me means uh, he he. Either he's he's improving dr uh, drastically also, or he, either he he's uh, actually playing a lot that we we maybe he has a little off day that that day, but uh, yeah. he actually he, he definitely he, he definitely play playing a lot. Yeah, and then for the twenty third pick, the rush went with Eugene Mack. Um, I don't know how Eugene fell this low after his performance at the Western Qualifiers. He went fourteen. Mm -hmm. He was the only person with a better record than Irene, um, and he was literally on uh king's court the entire weekend oh that's interesting like um like literally only two losses so he was literally playing on court one the entire time um the fact that he was the second male picked by the rush surprises me um mm -hmm. i got a feeling um he's gonna end up being this um one of the starting guys um eugene's a very very strong player he's got such deceptive shots uh with his uh when uh, you're up at the net uh, dinking and stuff, he's got an insanely, um, he does like almost like this knuckleball uh, serve return that when it's mm. coming at you, it's just moving ins insanely. So um, very, very good player. I thought he would have gotten picked higher um, just from his performance at the at the Western uh, qualifiers. So a uh, big shout out to Eugene. Um, and I'm actually also surprised um, he wasn't because he's uh he plays a lot with Sabrina as well. So I was surprised that the Wolverines maybe didn't pick him up as like a as a uh, alternate uh, male. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Then, yeah, as, he... as, as as someone to train with Sabrina and stuff. But like I got a feeling he might take Joe Joe Williamson's spot as the second guy on that team. That could be. Yeah, because he has yeah he has played 4.0 4.5 in open category, and he has a pretty uh significant showing last year he has nine gold six silver and two bronze which is yeah. not bad to be honest with you <laughs> no yeah exactly and like and i got to and like last year at the qualifiers i got to play with him and like he's improved like leaps and bounds compared to when i played with him last year at the qualifier so um big shout out to eugene uh i think he'll do well i gotta feel like i said i got a feeling he's gonna take one of those starting spots mm-hmm uh, then for the 24th pick, the Wolverines went with Sarah DeFore. Um, she went 10 and 11 at uh, the qualifier. So once again, if I'm just looking at this in a vacuum, there was a lot of women that um, Could be better. went higher, higher than her. 
This is the um is this their second female or their uh third female if I'm not mistaken. Third, third female. female. So she she's the yeah. alternate. Um but I get I guess she's gonna be training with um with uh, Natalie then because she's also from the East Coast. Hmm. So like you have Joel and Hatto in Alberta, you have Sabrina in BC, and then you have um Sarah and Natalie over on the East Coast for the Wolverine. So I'm I'm curious. Yeah, that's, it does make sense. I'm, I'm curious to see how that team dynamic is gonna work. Mm -hmm. Um especially for the women. Um but yeah, so but uh We'll, I saw at the end, like I said, just looking at her in a, in the vacuum, 10 and 11 isn't amazing at qualifiers. Like there was a lot of women in all the other qualifiers that had a lot better of a record. So I'm interested to see um, maybe she showed them something that the stats don't show, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, she only plays mostly in the open category, but that's it. Not uh, not not a lot of other, other information on her. So uh, wish her good luck, I'll say. Yeah. And then for the 25th, for Toronto United's first pick, because they kept all their, their main. <laughs> uh, they, went with jo they went with Joanna Fang, who did a, who played 11 and 9. Um, she was one of the top ranked females in her qualifier. Okay. Um, and uh, when she got announced, um, it seemed like Cam and uh, Mike for the CMPL knew exactly who 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 she was. So I got a feeling she's um She's probably always been hanging around those leaderboards in Ontario. Uh, mm. So, and and that's Toronto. That's Toronto United sticking with their philosophy of wanting everyone close so they can train together. I I I, she, she, I think she did not play uh, for maybe a year or something because she used to play a lot in in open category and she is uh, the woman single gold medalist uh, in twenty twenty two national. So I I will say. She, I will say she she will like if we go to Dream Breaker maybe she she will make make a big impact. Yeah, and that's and that's of course if uh, Hannah or uh, Carolina don't uh, go down or something like that. So mm -hmm. that's that's a that's a that's a steady backup. And hey, we've seen that happen before. That's how Carolina got in. Is Carolina yep. was the alternate last year, and she worked her way up into that starting role and never looked back. So. Mm -hmm. And then for the 26th pick, the Lions went with uh, Matthew Morneau. He had an, a good 12-7 uh, and 7 record at his qualifier. I don't know a lot about him, but once again, that's the Lions sticking with that keep it in Quebec. Exactly. Uh, uh, plan. And that 12-7 and 7 at those qualifiers, that's a respectable number. So if he's constantly training with Ernesto in them, um, I got a feeling he'll be just fine. And, as the, and he's the alternate behind Luis Charles and Ernesto. So, yeah. So yeah, he's ba he's basically uh, gonna get really good practice with them. So, mm -hmm. and then the twenty seventh, the Rollers went back to picking one of the owners, Corey <laughs> Osborne. Um, I don't want to give Corey too hard of a time. I gave him him and Rob a really hard time last year picking themselves. Um, and Corey, like I said, Corey's a better player than me. Like I'm not discounting that at all. Um. It's better that he's the alternate um, yeah. for this team, but there were so many good players available that you could have picked. Yeah, it's, I, it, I, seems, I, it seems like it's like and and this is all like I said, all respect to Corey. He's a better player than I am, but if I'm looking at this from clearly trying to win standpoint, there's going to be at least one guy I'm going to name af after after this that should have been picked before him oh yeah definitely um not, nothing again against him but the problem is like if you you ha like if you look at bo both of the player that has that like got drafted be before him i think the average of age is around into like 30s and well, and they actually commented that la like last year they said the average age of players was like 50. oh man and this year it's like 35. Yeah, so that, uh, that, you, that that's like taking all the, that's taking all the players shot, and that's a big difference. And like you are now old enough, you are now the age of where some of these players could be your kid, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, like, I, like, I, like, I'm so I'm like, and like I said, I'll keep saying it. He's a very, very good player, very, very strong player. But if 
I'm being subjective. Last year, he was the weakest guy on the rollers last year. Mm, that's like, I, like you had Yo- Jonas was on the team. He was their best male player. Then you had Rob was better than was better than Corey, and then it was Corey. Mm-hmm. Right? Like if yeah. if I, if I'm going to be completely subjective with this, so I don't think that's a good use of a pick when there's so many high quality male players still left on the board at this point. But it, could it we'll, be see how, we'll see how we'll we'll see how it goes. But like they have they have um, they have Ryan and they have. Um, Matt Sadola. So I don't think either of them are going to sub them, sub themselves out anytime soon. But is this could it, could it be a financial uh, aspect? Maybe I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. Uh, Who knows? Like, I don't know how much of an ownership how how the ownership is split between like him and Rob and all that. But um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, then for the twenty eight pick, the rush went off the board and went with Ava Weeks. Um, Shout out to Ava. We both know her and we both love her. <laughs> um, this is going to be a massive step up for her. Because mm-hmm. um, I've been playing against Ava. And in like the 3.5 and the 4.0 categories. Mm-hmm. So this is like, and she did okay. She did 12 and 6 um, on, the, on the weekend. Um, now, uh, on the mixed side, she didn't come close to, to the King's Court. The women's side, she did. I think she went 6 and 2. Mm-hmm. on the uh so she went so she went six and two so that means she went six and four on the um on the mixed so but yeah she's normally been playing 3.5 a couple 4.0 um tournaments uh here in alberta um and like she has massive potential um and like i i see her being the the the, the alternate so like at least she's going to get some good training with some high level players I'll be mm-hmm. interested to see if she goes in, though. Yeah, me, me too. Shout out to her. She's uh, our St. Albert uh, Club member, so uh, a huge congrats to her. Uh, she's also uh, don't don't forget she's the two, 2023 Alberta Junior of the Year. So it mean, means uh, that she's the upcoming uh, rising star in uh, in Alberta. Uh, she did play mostly in the 3.0, 3.5, and 4.0 four tournaments. That's what what uh, she. Uh, she has been playing. She she did pretty well in those tournaments. She I think she medals in most of those those tournaments. I think that the one of the kind of the problem with uh, uh, with her game is yeah uh, she requires uh, either a strong partner in order to to, to be a, a, able to to win. So uh, it, it's gonna really de- uh, de- depend de- depending on uh how the other two women in in rush uh, uh does uh e- either one uh when it's not available or when once got tired they they, uh, they need her to sub, sub in um other, other than other than that's a huge jump unfortunately for uh, for her from uh that uh the current level that she's playing to that uh, pro level so uh but we never know she's young she can uh, she can all, all, always all, always improve so um i'll i'll, I'll say uh, good luck to her oh yeah we're we're cheering for her for sure like uh like we're rooting for eva but um but yeah so like i'm i'm hoping that at the bare minimum she gets a great experience and gets some really good pointers and really good drills out of it and then we see her skyrocket within the next year or so Mm-hmm. It is what I'm really hoping for out of that pick. Um, at 29th, the Brewers went with Reese George. So, uh, for, if anyone watched the championship last year, Reese George was the alternate that came in for Susan Pounds uh, last year for the Brewers. She is mm-hmm. very, very good at doubles, um, both uh, women's and uh, mixed. She held her own very, very well. Her biggest folly is singles. Mm. She's not a singles player. Yeah, uh, she was basically like when the Brewers and the Rush went to the Dream Breaker, it was a guaranteed easy five points for the Rush. Gotcha. And because she was because that... she was playing against Casey, right mm. now, um, she she did only go nine and eleven at the uh, qualifiers, but I'm go like she's been she she played at that level, um, she's played against high level competition. Um, I know she normally plays with or um with her against a lot of the big names in the Toronto area, like Christina Chin, the Quantumotos and all them. So, um, and that's, a, that's a decent pick for their, um, for I'm guessing would be their alternate female. However, I, 
I'm interested to see if she doesn't maybe take one of those spots um, because the Brewers females are um, very raw compared to Reese. So at least, uh, sorry, not not, not the first one. Sorry, I'm I'm forgetting who's on who. Um, Not not Rosati, but um, Victoria DeMuso. I got a Mm -hmm. feeling Reese could compete with her for that second female slot. Yeah, I do. I, I do agree. I think uh, now, uh, w- while you just remind me, I think that's one of the reason why probably Rush get uh, Ava too because she she's pretty decent also in sing- singles. She can almost outrun men in 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 singles, so that she she could be a tiebreaker for 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 dream breaker. But yeah, she has to be in though. Is the thing uh, you have? Yeah, like you, you're you're yeah. That's that's that that's that's the thing with dream breakers is like. The way, at least the way the league works, is you submit your lineup, and that's the lineup you have to stick with for the entirety of the game. Like you can't make a sub, yeah, and, unless it's an injury. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes with that, anyways. So mm-hmm. uh, then, for the thirtieth pick, the Pronghorns went with Kalen Soroka. Um, I, I expected anyway. <laughs> yeah, that was that was expected. Um, she's she's going to be the alternate female. Um, Caitlin did like, and like we said last podcast, she didn't have the greatest um, qualifiers by, uh, and I think by her standards, she would say that like she went nine and eight, mm-hmm. um, and there was a couple females that did better than that. Um, so, but but like she does have the pedigree playing at a high level, um, but no, yeah, she she has she has the, the 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 ability to play at a high level. Um, like she hasn't played open. Um, no, she's she's but, consistently in the 4.0, 4.5. Yeah, 4.0, 4.5. The, the Nationals one, I'm going to put a little bit of caveat with that. There was only three teams <laughs> in that division. Okay, gotcha. That's what that's Does she I, play Because okay. she did play in the 4.0. That was the next day. And her and her partner didn't medal. And that was the one where Irene and her partner won. Oh, okay. So, like, I don't want to pour salt on that one. But even she said, because we congratulated her when we were there. She goes, yeah, but there was only three teams. Yeah. Right. So, but, but, um, but still, like she, like I said, she's very solid, uh, very, very good defense. So, uh, like if she needs to sub in for someone, if someone goes down, she should be able to do a decent job at it. So, and she's mm-hmm. training with yep. Brad all the time as well. So she's only going to get better. Yep. I agree. And then for the 31st, the smash, uh, for their alternate male went with Daiho Ozawa. So this is Asuko's brother. Okay. Uh, he was at the Western qualifiers. He did pretty well. He uh, went 11 and eight. Um, I'm interested to see if he gets in because like you have Nathan and Dalbeer as the starting guys. And I don't see either of those guys slowing down for him to sub in the other one little caveat I'll throw with him is that he does when he plays a uh, mix, he takes like 90% of the court. But I got a feeling Christina Chin and Cam are going to be like, no, we can take at least forty <laughs> exactly. percent. You can stay over stay, there. Stay, stay on, on your side. <laughs> yeah, you stay on your side. We can take forty percent at bare minimum. Don't worry exactly. about it. Exactly. So, but no, but he's a very good player. Um, he's got a very, very good serve return. Very good deceptive shots. Um, and even just like I said, even if he doesn't get in, uh, to be able to train, he'll be able to train with Nathan and Dalbeer all the time because they're all from Lower Mainland BC. So all the men will be are going to be able to train together with that. So that's um, that's going to be a, a that's a very good backup for the smash. Nice. Thirty uh, second pick was Jonas Dow here. He played for the Rollers last year. Um, I'm surprised uh, he got picked this late. Um, he's been playing a bunch of five O tournaments in the states um, mm-hmm. and doing pretty well, like getting like uh, silvers and bronzes and golds and singles and stuff like that. He's more of a he's definitely more of a singles first guy. Um, and with a six foot four, or whatever height he is, frame that doesn't surprise me because he, mo- <laughs> he and he moves very well. Um, but he's uh, he was one of those players last year who got um, constantly uh, better as the season went on. Mm-hmm. Um, so and like as him as the backup for um, for Joel and Hatto, um, I got <laughs> like I said, I don't know if he's going to get get in very much because. Because it's Joel and Hatto, but that's that is a great substitute to have come in if oh, yeah. one of them go down. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And then for the final pick, and I I think Toronto went away from their Toronto people only thing because they probably couldn't believe this guy was still on the board. 
Yeah, I, I was surprised too. From, Cal surprised from Calgary, too. Alberta. Oh uh, my God! Gets picked. I cannot believe he was he was still on the board. Now Chris didn't have the greatest qualifier, but the fact that he played for the Smash last year was very very um, played very very well, um, and he's a really really good player. Um, yeah, I can't believe he fell this low. And Toronto United was probably like, uh, he's still here. Why is he still here? You know, well, screw it. We're gonna take him. We're gonna step away from that Toronto only kind of group, just because little, having him, having like, him behind having him behind Matthew Quanamoto and Mark Godfrey, that's like a that's a great sub. Oh yeah, definitely to come in. And like that'd be one of those. That'd probably be one of those teams where you know what we don't have a problem rotating our guys to keep guys fresh because oh, that's yeah. a really high level player to have there, right? So yeah, yeah that was that was so weird. So I, I have the feeling same thing happened to Nathan Choi. Just like. Oh, yeah, no one's picking him. We're well, picking yeah, when like when when Chris hadn't been pitching, I was like, "Holy crap, is Chris going to get snubbed here? Like, what the heck's going on?" So, <laughs> but uh, no, so congrats to Chris. So that's all the teams. Um, so we'll quickly run through. I'll list the teams again. So the Lions have Ernesto. They have Luis Charles, Anna Sophie. They have uh, Jay Cassandra, then um, Anna Tonita. I think is how you say her name, and Matthew Morneau. Mm -hmm. And the Rollers have Jessica Quanamoto, Ryan Torrenson, Casey Rogers, Matt Sadola, Tara G. Giuseppe, and then Corey Osborne. Rush have Brett Forsythe, Jordan Vigna, Joe Williamson, Sophia uh, Rican, Eugene Mack, and Ava Weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Brewers have Mark Clemenson, Amanda Rossetti, Victoria DeMuzo, Mikhail Gamond, Kyle Hermetz, and Reese George. Pronghorns have Brad Chapman, Kim Brent, Emily. Jeff Elwood, uh, Michael McCaffrey, and Caitlin Soroka. Wolverine's got Joel, Hatto, Sabrina Lamb, Natalie Aria, Sarah DeFore, and then Jonas Dahl here. Uh, Smash F, Kim Layton, Christina Chin, Dal Beer, uh, Bandel, Nathan Choi. Uh, Leah Bradwell takes that third woman spot. We don't know if she'll be back in time for the year because of that injury, but she takes that third woman spot. Then you have uh, Daho Ozawa. And then Toronto United with their core four, Hannah Blatt, uh, Matt Quanamoto, Mark Godfrey, Carolina Hack, and then Joanna Fang, and then Chris Elaine rounding it off. So time for way too early predictions. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm starting one, to put down mine. <laughs> you, yeah, you, I'll, I'll list mine first, Victor, and then you can kind of, uh, you can okay. think about yours. Just because sure. I followed, I follow this a little bit more, so I'm a little bit more familiar with some of the players who played last year. Um, my top one and two, and these are kind of interchangeable for me. I can't not have Toronto United at in the one or two spot. Um, they're the defending champions. They play together all the time. Hannah Blatt's just getting better and better and better playing in the states in the MLP. Mm -hmm. um, with adding Chris Elaine as the third male, um, that just makes their men's their men's even more formidable. Joanna Fang is the one I'm the least familiar with, but um, going by her record at the qualifiers, if I'm looking at that in a vacuum, um, she's going to be a very good, very good addition. And literally, all those people can train together. Um, I know Hannah comes up early usually and trains with them before um, an event happens. And then uh, Chris Elaine's the only one who's not over there, but uh, him coming in is going to be a, a big shot of adrenaline for them as well. Um, then I would pick the Smash as the next team. Uh, you have probably the best women's pair. You have the national defending champions with Christina Chin and Kim Layton. Mm -hmm. um, then you have Dal Beer and Nathan Choi. Um, that is like a... Because Dalbeer is what six five, Nathan Choi is like six one, six two. Um, that is a massive presence on the court. Um, and then you have, uh, and then with uh, Ozawa there as the uh, backup male, like you said, we don't know about Leah Bradwell. I don't think Kim and Christina are going to need a sub anyways. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Right. So, but that's by far, in my opinion, your best female pair out of any team. And then adding Nathan and Dalbeer to those two, um, I think makes them probably next to Toronto United, probably the most well-rounded team. And that's not saying that they're weak in any position. Like they are probably like between them and Toronto, they're probably they don't really have a hole. You know what sure. I mean? Like they don't have one weak spot. Um, after that, it is kind of a toss-up 
Um, I kind of want to go with the Pronghorns next. Because you have Brad Chapman and Kim Brent, Emily and Jeff Elwood. This uh -huh. will depend a lot on how well Jeff and Brad play together. To yeah. see if they can steal some um, some points in the men's. Brad and Kim are already a proven entity. Um, and then same thing with Emily and Jeff. Um, that's going to be very, very, uh, very, very interesting with that. Um, it's between for me, it's the pronghorns and then kind of the rollers um are my kind of like three and four same thing kind of interchangeable there. Because Jessica Hanamoto and Casey Rogers is probably your um between it's be, between them, Kim Brent and Emily are kind of like your next best two women's pairings. Um and this is no shot to Hannah Blatt and Carolina Hack, but they don't play together as much as like these other these other teams play, especially Kim and Christina, who are already a proven national champion team, right? So, but if I go with the roll, like, yeah, rollers and pronghorns are kind of my interchangeable three and four. Like I said, uh, Jessica and then Casey are insanely strong. Um, Ryan Thorson is kind of the only semi unproven, at least at the pro level. Uh, Matt Stowe, we already know, can play. And like I said, my initial decision would be to pair Matt and Casey together because that's just going to be. That's going to be like a relentless barrage of like power and speed ups at you. Right. And then if Ryan and Jessica can play really well together, um, and I know they played together a fair bit at the qualifier, um, that's going to be a pretty decent team. Um, and then, uh, and then with their backup of Tara and Corey, um, I don't think Corey is going to get in, but, uh, and then Tara did uh, very well as the backup anyways. Um, I would then put probably the Lions. Um, Ernesto and Luis Charles are probably the most formidable male team next to probably Joel and Hatto. Um, I'd probably give them the edge over Joel and Hatto. And then also Matt and um, Matt Quantamo and Mark are also a very, very strong team. Their unknowns, though, are the women. Um, very, very kind of inexperienced, um, at least on the pro level side of it. So it'll be... The women will be the make or break for the Lions here. So I have them in fifth. They could easily jump up to like second. And it's more so because the women are an unknown quantity. But you like, they are very, very men heavy. And then the women are going to be iffy. So, but so that's going to come down, come down to it how well they do. Um, next would probably be who do I got left? Um, next would probably be the Brewers. Um, just because like the first, the, their first mixed pair of Mark and Amanda look really, really good. But everybody else after that is an unproven entity. And I don't know if experience is going to hold up. And then I have the rush coming last. Um, Brett and Jordan are very, very good. But then depending on who that second guy is going to be, if it's Eugene, I give them a better shot. But then the um, with Ava and then Sophia as the other women there, um, like Sophia is that actually it's, we know it's going to be Sophia because that's Jordan's partner. But I don't think they're a strong enough pairing to take on the likes of like Kim and Christina, even Hannah and Carolina, or even like uh, Kim, Brent, and Emily. Right. So I put I would put the rush last with that, and then kind of everyone else is sort of interchangeable. But the but yeah, so I'd have Tron United and the Smash as my top two. Um, then a kind of like a Pronghorns, Rollers. Pronghorns, Rollers, uh, Wolf, Wolverines. Oh no, sorry, pr Pronghorns, Rollers. And then I would have the Wolverines and Lions. And like I said, sorry, the Lions and the Wolverines, Brewers, and then the Rush would be last. And mm -hmm. the Lions are one of those ones just because it's unknown quantity with the women. And like mm -hmm. with the uh, Wolverines, Joel and Hatto are a very, very strong pair. Um, I know Sabrina Lamb is very, very good, but I don't know about the other two women on the Wolverines. Mm -hmm. They seem very, very inexperienced. But that's yeah, how are. that's how I would that's kind of do that. So how about you, Victor? So uh, you you got more experience from me, so uh, uh, than me, so I I'm not gonna judge your <laughs> no, <laughs> judge, it's, judge you from it, there. There's no wrong. This is why it's way too early predictions. We are literally going on what we've seen on paper and what the little we've seen of people. I did this last. I did this last year as well. So there's no judgment with what you pick here. 
Gotcha. So yeah, I I, I pick I have a just I, I have you pretty similar except just a couple of picks. I actually put lions as uh, as first because I have a feeling the 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 the, the women's they seems to be underwhelming. But if you look at their uh, tournament record a little bit more closely, they are actually pretty strong. So I will I have, I have I'm suspecting they they may be they they may be a, a going to be a big surprise in. Uh, when they're gonna come come in uh in in the like first couple of tournaments so that therefore that's why i put put them as first especially uh we know those men's gonna be be winning uh, the um probably the the uh the, the men's almost get, uh, uh, at a guarantee level and then they probably be able to take uh, take over more, more court in into mix so that's why i i pick i do pick them as first and then now after that i i have a little bit same as you i have the toronto the toronto united a second and smash right right after it's pretty uh pretty self-explanatory there uh they, both of them have has a very uh, strong team they can be an interchangeable but i i have a feeling is uh, why i put in second or third is uh they might have they might not have to we call that surprising element that the the lines uh, is in, in, introducing into their uh their lineup and then i put uh prong uh prong are actually at at uh, a four because we they uh they have pretty strong women in there and uh, w strong women that makes a big difference special especially in that team format so that's why i, I will i will put put them fourth uh, rather than uh, lower than that uh after that i have, the, I have uh fifth as uh, the rollers because we uh, we have a uh, macedola we have jessica kawamoto in there and cassie rogers in in there uh the only biggest problem is the other male uh not sure how, how he's he's, he's I, we know that he's have a very good uh, duper he has played a lot but in the us is he he is he gonna be able to match up well with the the others is uh is still an improved entity so that's why i i put fifth uh, I put I I'm a little I'm a little optimistic putting uh, Rush as six because of uh, of uh, jo Jordan being being there uh, uh, try try maybe being able to mentor the other two to uh, to uh, inexperienced uh, women and we they have uh, some strong strong men in in that in that category that's the only, only uh, kind of the reason I put them as six uh, seven I put them uh, over Wolverine because yeah they have a good enough man but the woman's gonna be kind of the iffy side they're gonna get in 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 their group and uh, when you have an iffy woman in the in your group uh you might not gonna be able to uh, pull through uh, some of the wins and then i put the uh, brewers last because it's a little bit all over the place unfortunately in in in, in that pick so um that that's why i put put them all, all the way down there yeah, so our top our top five are pretty close. We have some in the in a different order, but we kind of pick the same. Like you have the Lions first, and then Toronto and Toronto United, then the Smash. I have the mm -hmm. I have the Lions at fifth, but still, like that, our top five are pretty much the same, just in different orders. So yeah, just kind of interchangeable, look, kind of. Yeah, right, and like, and that's and that's what it was last year. Like, um, when I when I picked the top five last year, it ended up almost being exactly that. Um, there's like there's quite a few unknowns and kind of off the board picks um, that might throw us for a loop, but I'm excited to see how uh, how this uh, season goes. I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, we'll see uh, those new par parents. It's, does it make make a difference? And uh, uh, we'll we'll see if those those kind of uh, unknown players get they if if they they can make an impact into the game. Absolutely. So. May 25th is going to be the first event, and that's going to be at the One Health Club in Ontario. Uh, that was, They were the host of the championship uh, weekend last year, so it's a very, very good facility. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we'll be watching, and then, of course, we'll do a review after it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, um, if they're doing two streams for two different courts, what we and Victor might do is assign one stream to each other so we don't have to watch everything. Because I know last year when I tried to do it by myself, I kind of picked the mainstream and then just recapped <laughs> the scores of the other one. When it was championship weekend, it was easier because they were doing one game at a time. 
so it was easier to follow along. But uh, if they're going to do ones where they have multiple games going on at the same time, me and Victor might just go rock, paper, scissors. Okay, Victor, you take the main <laughs> stream. I'll take the second stream. And that way we can kind of do our own recap that way. So yeah, it sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, okay. I'm going to put my husband hat on just for a two minute span here. <laughs> I find it very funny that every qualifier, except for the West, the top ranked female got picked. <laughs> okay. This is me as a husband, not me as an analyst. But the top female, the top ranked female in the qualifier did not get picked. There was three women Dutch, that Dutch. were ranked below her that did get picked. So take that, take what with that at what you want. But the silver lining with this, with my wife not being picked, is that I'm not going to show any bias to any team. So <laughs> we'll take that as the silver lining. Anything else to add, Victor? No, it's uh, just uh, yeah, just too bad. And this year has to be a pretty weird uh picking because uh yeah a couple of big names did not did uh did not get picked earlier and then get just maybe uh, got completely for, forgotten or anyway that's that's how 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 i felt maybe maybe they would do better uh, they learn their lesson uh, this year by by doing this and then do better next year yep absolutely all right thanks for listening and watching everyone we will see you in a couple of weeks once uh more news hits the table Thanks again, oh, yeah. Victor. Thank you. See you, everyone.